G'day guys, Evo here. Um, I got uh, a PM at the website asking me how I did the window net for the buggy, so I thought I'd just do a really quick tutorial to show you guys how to do it. Um, or how I did it, I should say. Um, as you can see, I've just created a couple of layers here. Um, I got this image off the net. Um, as you can see, it's got a white background, so I, whenever I'm deleting a white background, I put a black one below it, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, the best way is to use the magnetic wand tool, or the wand tool itself, um, the magic wand. So I just use magic wand to get rid of white, because it's got this grey area here, you can see on the edges. Um, I just find it easier if you turn the tolerance up here, up high, you sometimes have to do it in stages. Um, I've been mucking about with it over the last few but, uh, minutes, so I've got it right. So, but I've set it to 170, and as you can see, it pretty much grabs most of it, bar a few little pieces. Uh, it actually grabs too much. Make sure the anti alias is on as well. Um, then what you have to do is come up here and go minus from selection. Just grab your normal marquee tool. Um, and you just very, very quickly neaten up these areas, as you can see, because it grabbed too much. Um, sorry it's so small, I'm quite limited to screen space because of the capture software. But, um, yeah, we just need it up. You don't have to, I'm not going to be too fussy with this because it's only the tutorial, but um, when you do it yourself, you, you don't have to be ultra fussy about it because you can fix it up with a magnetic wand tool after, uh, magnetic wand tool, um, the healing brush after, so... But yeah, anyway, that's that's roughly how you do it, and as you can see, it's reasonably neat and tidy. Um, then what you have to do is just delete it. So as you can see, when I deselect that, um, it's pretty much got rid of 99% of the white. It has taken a few bits out of here, um, as you can see. So in, in that case, what I'd do there is I use the Band-Aid tool and just Band-Aid it. Um, As you can see, if you never use a band-aid tool before, it's actually quite good. It just automatically does a sample. Um, as I said, I'm not going to be too fussy because it's it is only a, a quick tutorial. Okay. Um, now the next thing, a lot of people don't know about this function in. Um, I actually move it and everything before I do the color, but a lot of people don't realize about this function in Photoshop. Um, control T brings up the uh, free transform. Everyone knows about that. What people don't know about is the fact that you can um, actually, con if you hold down control, it changes the cursor on the corner, and you can actually set stuff askew, um, like I just did then. So you can actually twist stuff there's um what this comes in really handy for especially if you're trying to match something to a wireframe um in the case of i've quickly put one in here anyway um so i've actually chucked a wire in just an example of a wireframe so once again, Control T. If we hit the hold down the con just hold down your Control key on your keyboard, and you can actually slide that into there like so. And as you can see, you can even though the wireframe is off skew, you can um, manipulate this accordingly, so it will actually fit that wireframe. And what it means is you won't actually get the stretching of the texture. But in the case of this one, we actually need this to be straighter because it's sort of like this is like the window section of a buggy or car that we're doing. Um, so once you once you've applied that, as you can see, it's just pretty simple. Um, all I next I did was to get the um, to get the window. The, like the corner section of the window, it's just a matter of copying um, and pasting a new piece in. So, so I just did that. Um, once again, my favourite tool, free trans, 
free transform. Um, yeah, you can pretty much just manipulate it into spot. You don't even have to be really careful with it because the window net, in, in this case the window net, doesn't actually match. Not completely. I'm just trying to line up so the straps line up. There we go. Um as you can see it's a little bit messy it's just to clean that up just grab your um i can't remember what's done hold the marquee like the lasso but the line one um, and got that stupid bug Just delete that out of there. Um, in the case of this being a wireframe, you don't have to worry about what's on the outside, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, now, to and then just like a bit of cleanup, to be able to select these two layers to grab an alpha layer, a lot of people don't know about this one either. Um, if you actually hold down control, you can bring up loader layer as a selection. If you hold down control and shift and click another layer, you can load both as a selection. Um, once you've done that, because in the case of this window net, because it's got a transparency on it, um, we need to quickly go into the alpha channels with the selection loaded. Down here, you've got this little button here, just click it. And bingo, we've got an alpha channel. Um, when you're doing your alpha channels, there's a little trick as well. Um, people don't realise about this, but if you come up here, you can actually edit your alpha channels to make them. Um, sharper so with it still highlighted if you come up here and go to um, image adjustments and then levels and it'll bring this screen up here what you can do with this um, sorry it's a little bit hard on the screen space here but by sliding you'll see it better when you do it yourself by sliding these sliders in a little bit um, and when it's bigger on your screen you'll actually see more what it's done um, but what that has actually done is sharpened up the edge here. Um, make sure you leave it selected when you do it, and by doing that, it actually gets rid of any. Um, it just neatens up the edges of the selection. Um, and that's about it. Um, apart from that, yeah, uh, just a matter of doing something like uh, desaturating it and then putting a color on. Um, I find, just really quickly again, you have to forgive me, I'm used to the Mac, um, <laughs> and the different keyboard shortcuts, uh, yeah, d for the best way I've found to do colours for this is if you go, um, image adjustments and then desaturate it, and then just go, um, image adjustments and then go to variations, and you can put your variations in rather than putting an overlay or something else in. So, for instance, if you wanted it to be blue, we just put more blue in. Uh, you might want to adjust it accordingly. And you can make it darker, lighter. Um, you know, if you want more red, you can put more red in. Um, remembering red's got yellow in it as well. So, yeah, and then it's just a matter of making it darker, etc. Um, so yeah, by doing this, I just hope this helps you out, um, and enjoy.